Hey, this is Nick from Income Digs. Welcome to this video tutorial where we're gonna be getting into QuickBooks and again, specifically QuickBooks for real estate investors. And what we're going to tackle today is the concept of using open balance equity. All right, so what happens a lot, especially the time of this recording, it's literally New Year's Eve, okay? So at this time of the year, we are typically getting our books in order and we're getting ready for the next year. Okay, we're getting our taxes together and we're getting ready for the next year. For some folks out there, we might be starting to use a new accounting system in this new year. So maybe we're coming on board to QuickBooks Online or Desktop, or we're switching over from a different software to another. Some of us might have just been using Excel or Google Sheets or Mint or something else to manage our, our finances. And like this year in, is going to be the year that we're moving to a new system. So the question is, how do we get all our old information into the new system without having to go back and literally put in every single transaction? Because that'll take forever and what value are we really getting out of it too? We have to ask ourselves, is that historical information really necessary for our books? Sometimes it might be a little bit, but sometimes it's not. So we know that when we start off with a new set of books, we need to make sure our balances are correct so that when we start this new year, everything will reconcile. And that's what I'm gonna demonstrate with you today. I'm going to envision that my set of books is kinda of empty and we're going to be using some open balance equities to get some things going, all right? So, if you can join me in this sample set of real estate books, and you'll notice the first thing that you're probably seeing is like, well, there's a bunch of numbers here, so obviously this is not a, a empty set of books, which I agree with you, but what we're gonna to do to demonstrate this whole technique is I'm gonna use a balance sheet as of 2016. Now I'm recording this on 12-31-2019, so um, you know, it's, it's up to date, but I'm using 2016 because I have transactions in my book starting in 17, so I wanna show you what an empty set of books looks like. And when we're doing this, when we first open QuickBooks for the very first time, we have a brand new account, your balance sheet and your P&L, your profit and loss report, are both going to be absolutely, completely empty. There's nothing in there to show, all right? There's no transactions at all. What we want to have happen is that at the start of the new year, our balances are accurate and um, you know reflect real life. Okay, so if you have you know 100 bucks in the bank, we want QuickBooks to show that you have 100 bucks in the bank. If you have a property that you own, we want QuickBooks to show that that property is owned. All right, so I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, the first thing to think about is that in the chart of accounts, QuickBooks does have a way to to do an open balance equity. For example, if I had a building, when I create this chart of accounts, or I'm sorry, if, if you are just in your, your um, if you're just in your chart of accounts and you're just getting started, everything's blank here, right? So when you add a new uh, account, for example, maybe you're adding your fixed asset account for buildings, you own buildings, a, you know, a house or multiple rental properties, whatever the case might be, okay? And so when you create this, uh, we actually have the ability to do original cost as of. Okay, so you could tell the system that as of, in my case, it could be 12-31-2016, as of, oh, I'm sorry, I'm doing it the reverse way. As of 12-31-2016, I have $100,000 worth of property, okay? That might be true, all right? So I could do it this way, and I can save and close it. And so how does that get reflected on my balance sheet? Let's just take a look at that. If I go to my 2016 balance sheet, you see that that $100,000 gets put in there in the fixed asset, and now QuickBooks needs to balance that out. We need to answer the question, where the heck did that money come from? And they use this account called Open Balance Equity. And the purpose of this account down here is to simply offset anything where we're not sure how we got to it, You know, we don't have all the historical transactions, but we know as of a certain date, we have this amount in there, we offset it with the open balance equity. And all QuickBooks does, it gives us this little journal entry, as of the date I indicated on the chart of accounts, that um, we debit the asset account and they automatically credit the, um, they automatically credit that equity account. And that's what they do, all right? So that's a cool way to do it. What I'm gonna teach you how to do is how to do these journal entries kind of on your own so we can add a little bit more detail to it. So I'm actually gonna delete this one. 
All right, so again, envision that we are coming into, in this case, we're coming into 2017, okay? In, in my example here, we're coming into 2017, and I know that I own a building, I know that I have a certain amount in my checking account, I know that I have a certain amount in my credit card account, all right? So I want my balance sheet to reflect that. Now, the first thing I'm gonna say is to add any purchases, any property that you own, with as much detail as possible. Now, if you don't wanna go back and do the whole HUD settlement statement, that's okay, but I would encourage you to do as much of that as possible. And I do have some videos on that specifically. But what I mean by that is to take your settlement statement, in this case I have a, a sample here, where we take the sales price and we, we take the expenses that we have and we get it under our books the, the exact way that we would have recorded it if we were purchasing it live, okay? So let's kind of pretend that this property I'm purchasing uh, maybe in the middle of 2016 somewhere, okay? And so what I need to do is record these items on uh, my, I need to record those items on my, my sheet here, all right? So I'm gonna do that. All right, so I'm gonna do a new journal entry. And I'm pulling this up on my other screen just for now. I can show you how it reconciles in a second. And make this as of the date that it happened. So let's pretend that I purchased this property 8-31-2016. All right, so the first thing you're gonna do is you're building original cost. You're gonna debit it the purchase price. Now you might wanna split up land and buildings. I'm not gonna go through that right now. Okay, you can do that. Um, and then we have certain things that come in and out of the closing that we need to account for. So I have a bunch of settlement charges that are um, due from me, okay? So I'm gonna put some of those in there. So for example, I'm being charged interest on the loan that I'm getting, okay? So I'm gonna put that in here for, maybe it's like uh, points, right? I might have an appraisal fee, so that'd be a closing cost, original cost. Now remember, and if you need to, watch the video on recording a purchase of property, but whether or not we, we are treating the expenses as an expense or something else that we would then depreciate um, comes into account when we're looking at what, to, what, we're, what the closing costs are. So typically anything that's a closing cost like an appraisal fee, a title search, something like that, we're going to be be uh, amortizing those costs. And so we're tracking them in our fixed assets where something like interest or taxes is something we're going to deduct in that tax year. Okay, uh, let's say I have another interest charge. So I had the origination fee and then maybe I have daily interest. Okay, I have to pay um, homeowner's insurance. Let's just do, let's do taxes, okay at closing and title search. And I'm just kind of bouncing through a few here. I'm, I'm not gonna do too many more of these. Let's just do um, a couple more. Okay, so again, title insurance, maybe for the lender, something like that, right? Okay, great. Now I maybe got a loan for this property. So let's say that I have a loan in the amount of $85,000. So you would take your your uh, conventional mortgage account, okay, and you would put in how much that is worth. And then you're going to have to come to closing with some amount of cash. So that cash is going to be leaving your checking account. So you can bring up the checking account and it's $25,977.40, okay? Now that's just an example of a closing. So if I were to record this here, click Save and Close, it's okay that I'm missing class fields for now. Okay, so here, now looking at my balance sheet as of 1231, 2016, I'm gonna skip over the checking account for a second. We see I have my building here, I have my closing costs, I have my mortgage, okay? Now your mortgage might have a different value as of this date, right? This mortgage might be worth 83,000. I'm gonna show you how to deal with that. Also, your closing costs and your building costs, make sure those match your tax returns because from here on out, if you're following what I teach in my real estate accounting bootcamp, pretty much all my videos, you want your balance sheet to match your taxes. So if these amounts don't match what you've been doing on your taxes, we should make those match, okay? So record those appropriately. All right, so now let's talk about, we own that building and it's on the books, but I know that I don't have negative $25,000 in the bank. I must have put that out there when I purchased the property, but it had to have come from somewhere. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up the statements of my checking account as of current day, and I'm gonna record that transaction. Um, and 
I'm going to use open balance equity to help me do that. I'm going to bring this over here as well. All right, so what I have is I have a bank statement for my checking account. So if I scroll to the right here, you see a bank statement that's close to the end of the year. Obviously, this is 2019, so it doesn't really work. But let's say that I have 38124 in my account. Okay, so you know that going into next year, you want QuickBooks to have that exact amount in your books so that you know from the start of 2020, everything's going to be accurate, okay? So if that's the case, we need to add that transaction to our books and use open balance equity so that it appears the right way. So going back to QuickBooks now, I currently have negative 25,977.40 in my account. So what do I need to do? I need to make a transaction to make this equal to 38,124.62. So I'm actually going to be doing a debit, and I'm just calculating it here, of 64,102.02, all right? So I'm gonna do that over here. I have the same situation. So I'm gonna go journal entry, and do this as of the last day of the year, okay? So 12, 31, 2016. Again, I'm just doing this 2016 because I'm just kind of like pretending that we're in 2016 instead of 2019. I'm going to take my checking account, I'm going to debit it 64,102.02, okay? And then I'm going to bring in my open balance equity and offset it. Okay, now I'm not sure where that money came from. I probably have a whole list of transactions where I'm putting money into the business, I'm spending money, I'm doing all this stuff, right? But I don't know what that is and I'm not going to spend the time to go back and do all of that. I just know that as of the end of the year, I have a certain amount in my checking account and I need it to match. All right, so if I do that transaction, you see that my checking account is now 38,124.62, which is exactly what my statement says. So now moving forward in the new year, I'm going to be ready to go with that. Everything's going to be accurate, right? Cool, all right, so that's good. Now, where did that show up there? Open balance equity. Now, we can do this for other things as well. For example, we can take away some money from this mortgage. Let's say that as of 12 31 2016, I have $80,000 due on this mortgage, right? Let's also bring into uh, to account a credit card. I don't have any credit card stuff down here right now. I'm going to add it. Now, you could do another journal entry, but what I like to do whenever I'm doing these like reconciliation activities is I like to keep it to as few transactions as possible. So I'm actually going to take the single journal entry that I did for the checking account and just add some lines to it. And how do I do that? I can drill down into my checking account, see the two transactions that are in the books, take this one, and I'm going to delete this open balance equity just for now, okay? And I'm going to do a credit card, okay? Now, how much do I have in my credit card? Again, you're gonna want your statement to match what's in QuickBooks, so let's go to our statement. So I have a statement here of, it looks like a balance of 619664. 61.96.64. Okay, and that's my credit card. Now, why am I crediting it? It's a liability account, right? So to increase the liability account, you're going to credit it. All right, what else can I do? Well, let's think about that loan and mortgage, right? That first mortgage. Let's say that I I owe not 85,000 like it's what you know where it initiated, but I owe 80,000. So I've paid off 5,000 somehow. So that we would debit, we were, we're decreasing that liability. All right? You can do this for all of your accounts. So think about security deposits. Maybe I have some security deposits on hand from my tenants. Security deposits should be treated as a liability. Okay? So maybe I have let's say 2300 bucks in security deposits, okay? And you add all those accounts in there and you can have as many as you need. If you have 20 accounts, do 20 accounts. You could even do the building in this as well. If you don't want to record the whole HUD statement, you can do that. The bottom line is we want our accounts to match at the end of this. So I can take this and go open balance equity. QuickBooks is going to automatically calculate it and I can click save and close. Not worried about the classes right now. Now if you just hit the back button to get me back to my report, and you see that my checking account is still correct. I have 6196 in my credit card, so that is accurate as well. 2300 in security deposits. My mortgage has decreased to 80,000, and my open balance equity reflects accordingly. 
All right. So everything's working out pretty nicely here. And I can set up my balance sheet to be ready to go for the new year. And that's the whole purpose of this, all right? So if you are in this boat where you want to get on QuickBooks, because let's face it, it's the real way to be able to set up your business to be able to scale, where you're managing everything in a centralized location, where it does the work for you to make sure you have proper financial reporting. If you're doing that at the turn of this year, or actually any time, I suggest you look into this open balance equity as a way of saying, give me a line in the stand, give me a stake in the ground where as of this point forward, I'm gonna be managing everything through QuickBooks. But I'm not gonna go crazy driving myself nuts getting the information in there. I'm gonna use open balance equity to get my balance sheet accurate as of the day before I started. All right, so definitely use this method. If you have any questions about this or if you have any specific scenarios you want me to go over, feel free to leave them in the comments. I'd be happy to talk through them. This is something that's been coming up a lot more now that we're getting into you know, tax season and people are switching over to QuickBooks. All right, I'll also encourage you that if you're interested, if you're a real estate investor of any kind, if you're into flipping, rehabbing houses, if you have rental property, if you're a bookkeeper for somebody who does this, check out IncomeDigs.com forward slash Reeb, R-E-A-B. That's a link for Real Estate Accounting Bootcamp. We're having some really great success from the students taking the course where I teach you end to end from the start of just getting set up on books all the way to some advanced functionality, how to manage QuickBooks Online for real estate investing. All right, I definitely hope you check it out. I'd love to have you in the course. Until next time, feel free to check out all the free resources available at IncomeDigs.com, and I'll talk to you soon in the new year.